Can Bruce Wayne solve a mysterious murder and clear the names of Batman Inc.? Not if Lex Luthor has anything to say about it. Let's hop into the pages of Batman issue number 119 and find out what happens next together, shall we? So then, this issue opens up with a flashback to the earliest days of Batman. Bruce talks about his plans to become a bat, to live in the darkness, and strike at evil. Being a thespian himself, Butler Alfred obviously respects Bruce's flair for the theatric, but at the same time, he has to wonder what of Bruce's many enemies who will come to adopt the darkness, or worse still, the enemies who live in the light. Smash cut to modern day, and we see Batman and Lex Luthor diametrically opposed against one another, one clad in black and the other clad in white. Ah, I see what you're doing here. Now, at the end of the previous issue, we had learned that Lex Luthor was actually using his vast fortune to help fund Batman Inc. in Bruce's absence, and now that all the members of Batman Inc. are suspected murderers, Batman thinks that none of this can be a coincidence, but before he can really put the screws to old Lex, the local cops end up opening fire on him. It seems that Luther hasn't been in this country for long, but he's already managed to buy the entire police force. Finding Lex later on as Bruce isn't hard at all for Batman, especially as Luther couldn't help but drop some hints about where he would be. In conversation, Lex just so happened to mention Pino Grigio and this country, wouldn't you know what happens to have one of the rarest bottles of wine ever made, a 20 million dollar vintage with a dark and macabre history. As the story goes, the vineyard was burned down one night by rivals, and the vineyard owner's daughter decided to take vengeance into her own hands and kill the people who did it. Lex owns the bottle and the restaurant that owned it before because, well, he just has to own everything now, doesn't he? But why Batman Inc.? Why now, and why is he willing to meet with Bruce even after sicking the cops on him before? Well, as Lex goes on to explain, the world is changing under his feet. There there is no Superman anymore. Well, no original Superman. We've seen Lex and John go head to head over in his own book. And without his amazing fortune, Lex thinks that Bruce isn't very much of a Batman anymore. Hell, his ward Nightwing made a massive fortune and decided to give it away to charity. That's why Lex has been spreading the green all over the place. He wants to replace hero kind. Though he's certainly not doing it for any altruistic reasons. In fact, Luthor pours out that very expensive bottle of wine after telling the story showing that he doesn't really care about anything. If nothing else, though, Batman does gleam from this conversation that Luthor doesn't actually seem to know anything about Abyss's murder, which is why he wants his own scientists to do their own autopsy. Which, of course, means Batman is now officially in a race against the clock to see Abyss's body before Luthor can get his own grubby hands on it. Luckily, that lady detective from before actually seems to be a fan of Batman and his work, or at the very least, she seems to hate how easy easily Luther was able to corrupt every other cop on the force. She makes it so the Dark Knight can have some alone time in the morgue and already things start to not add up. This body is already way more decomposed than it should. But perhaps most damningly of all, the cause of death on this corpse seems to be one 9mm gunshot to the head, which is impossible because the members of Batman Inc. share Batman's own distaste for guns. It soon becomes very clear to Bruce that whoever this mysterious Abyss character is, they've gone to great lengths to try and fake their own death, but why? Is it all to frame Batman Inc.? Did Luther put him up to it? Well, maybe not, actually, as it's at that very moment Abyss makes himself known to Batman by blacking out the entire room around him. Abyss goes on the oh-so-typical cryptic villain monologue, though they do drop one rather interesting nugget of information, and that is they imply that whoever they are, Batman created them. Now, whether they mean that literally or figuratively is yet to be seen. Now, Batman is still trapped in this kind of dark dimension. The lady detective tries to get him out of it, and she does. The only problem is, when Batman comes back, he seems to have completely lost his sight. And I mean, blindness is really more of a daredevil thing, isn't it? And so that was Batman issue number 119, everybody. And once again, I like what Joshua Williamson is doing here. Lex Luthor serves as a very fun and very threatening foil for the Dark Knight. In the last run, Batman losing his fortune was really just kind of window dressing here, they actually seem to be doing something with it and showing what the fallout would be if someone like Batman was one day not nearly as rich as he had been. And while it still might take some convincing to get me on Team Abyss, they definitely imply here that the character might have more depth than their very generic, super villainous, dark, edgy boy costume would lead me to believe. But probably my favorite part of this issue, though, is actually getting to see Batman work as a detective, amass clues, try and solve a mystery. It's 
good stuff in a side of the character that is way too often forgotten. Overall, I think I'd feel positive giving this one another 8 out of 10. Hey there everyone, Cape Jewel again, and I want to thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. As always, if you liked what you see, be sure to like, subscribe, comment. It really helps drive engagement and helps me out too. Also, if you are a patron, which you can become for as little as a dollar a month, you will get exclusive content that no one else can ever see, and you'll get to see the Comic Multiverse podcast before anyone else too. You can check out all this and more down in the description. And until next time everyone, this has been Cape Jewel, and I'll see you all next time. Cheers. <laughs>